Welcome back everyone, Dustin here again, Average Guy Hi-Fi with another beginner's guide for you guys. And this is a video, honestly, I should have made a long time ago, uh, way earlier on in the year. Speaking of a year, by the way, just about hit 4,000 subscribers that first year, so thank you guys very much for all the support. I'm just really, really enjoying this. Um, I haven't eaten today and it's late at night, but I still just come home and I look forward to making these videos. So hopefully you guys, and now you are because the comments have been awesome, so thank you guys for again for all the support. But this video is really important. Again, should have made it sooner, but obviously you can probably see behind me, i focusing this one on just giving you guys a beginner's guide to purchasing Center Channel. And um, my, my many years of doing in this hobby, seeing different systems, one of the benefits of uh, buying stuff used is I get to see people's setups, uh, a lot of different people's setups, and I see kind of a lot where people make mistakes. And I would say the center channel is probably the number one mistake people make with their home theater. People either, they don't realize the importance of a center channel, um, and honestly, this number kind of fluctuates a little bit, but many some people say it's 70% of movie dialogue 70% to 50% of movie dialogue comes from the center channel. I totally believe it. I'm more towards the 70%. If you watch some action movies, um, the talking and things like that, you can hear like the, the, ambi the ambient noises kind of in the background uh, from your left and your right. And it's hugely important to have a center channel that um, blends well with your left and right speakers. And if you're budgeting, I would budget your system just take your front three speakers that's a very important area to put your money i would take that budget and just chop it into thirds i would spend a third of your budget on the on the right speaker a third of your budget on the center speaker and a third of your budget on the um, left speaker that's kind of the way that i would do it to make sure that you're getting a nice quality center channel to match your to match your mains and the reason i say that is because i've been in so many theater or people's home theaters and seen the systems and things like that and to just use a specific speaker for as an example it'd be like klipsch rf82s which are nice uh, large towers with dual eight inch woofers and a nice um, titanium tweeter um, so they'll have those uh, left and right and then they'll have an rc uh, 42 which isn't a bad center channel that matches the uh, rb 41s just fine or the uh, rf 41s just fine if it's smaller room, but you don't want to have a big room where your center channel is the smallest speaker. And that unfortunately is very common in this hobby. And I know the reason why it's the TV stands. People will go to a furniture. Hey honey, we're going to do a little home theater in the living room or in the bonus room. Let's go pick out a TV stand so we can put this thing together. I'm trying to get you to challenge that thought. I want you to pick out your budget for your left, your right, and your center speakers. Um, and the, figure out what size you want for these speakers and then go buy your TV stand after that and just make sure that the uh, TV stand accommodates your center channel, not that you're having your center channel accommodate the TV stand. I would say that that is the number one piece of advice. That is the compromise that many people make. Um, the good news is like if you have your TV stand in place, they make center channel stands that are specifically designed to go in front. That's not ideal with people with kids and things like that, but that is one of the alternatives. So uh, basically buy your center channel, then buy the TV stand. That is, that's the best piece of advice I can give you. Um, again, we're going to talk about budget. Don't have a $1,000 left speaker, $1,000 right speaker, and a $200 center channel. If that was kind of the only setup that I have, then I would just run it with no center channel. And they call it phantom center channel, but basically what it's doing is just sending the um, the receiver, you'll calibrate it to your system, not have a center channel included in it. So it'll send the dialogue from the left and right speaker. I would much rather have no center channel than have a really nice right speaker, really nice left speaker, and a inferior center channel. It's just too important of a speaker for you to compromise on. So um, I've had way better results uh, just running no center than I have when I have really nice towers and then have the center channel try to keep up with that. Much better results. Um, again, the, the dialogue and all that stuff comes out of the center channel. So if you have something that's lacking um, when compared to the rest, it's going to be the weak link in the chain. And it, it really shows itself uh, quickly as well, too, uh, especially with male voices. That's kind of the... I don't have a deep voice, so it wouldn't matter for me, but um, nice, deep male voices really is kind of where you notice. That's where I notice the biggest difference between an inferior center channel once everything's been calibrated and a nice, high-quality center channel. Um, LCR. So that's when people say they're uh, left speaker, center channel, right speaker. In an ideal world, you would have three matching speakers across the front. This right here is a Klipsch KL650THX. That is my center channel. Um, so... What I mean by having matching, just have uh, many manufacturers out there make speakers that would match. Um, you can even use a bookshelf uh, as a center channel. Say if you have nice 
uh, bookshelf speakers. You can use a bookshelf as a center channel as well, as, as long as you can get it positioned correctly. That's going to be key when that scenario. Um, speaking of positioning, um, you what you don't want is, and this is really what I see a lot of, probably one of the number one mistakes minus the TV stand, is having the center channel you know, left and right speaker, they're all good, triangle right to the main listening position, but they'll just have the center channel sitting right on the floor. Um, what that's doing is the tweeter is just firing at your shins or at your knees. What you want to do, if you have to put it on the floor, then maybe get some door stops and make sure that that tweeter is angled towards the uh, MLP, which is the main listening position. Make sure that that tweeter is as close as possible to being angled towards your ears. It should also be close to the, um, to the TV as possible. So that's another big one too. You'll see like somebody will have their receiver right below the TV and then the center channel below that. I would reverse those if at all possible. Bring the center channel up to the TV as close as possible. And then again, make sure either go above the TV like my earlier videos. You'll see that I have a TV stand um, or speaker stands and I have the uh, tweeters angled down towards the main listening position. I've had great results there. Um, so make sure that you get the tweeter angled correctly. And to just throw something out there that you guys probably aren't familiar with. There's acoustically transparent screens out there for the lucky ones that have dedicated home theaters. That is the ideal situation. And if you look at when you go to a movie theater, um, the speakers are directly behind the screen. So the sound is basically coming directly from the screen at your, at your ears. So even putting it below the TV stand or above the TV stand is still a compromise, but you can really um, make sure that you get it positioned correctly and make sure you run your Odysseys or whatever your uh, home calibration is and it'll kind of compensate for those type of things. But those acoustically transparent screens, that's the ideal situation. You want that sound to be coming directly at you. You want it to feel natural. You want it to feel like they're in the room um, talking to you. That's really, you know, you know when you start getting your system dialed in when somebody slams a car door and it sounds like, or somebody knocks on the door and you turn your head and look at it. You want it to seem like they're in the room, whatever's going on on the TV is in your room and it's happening. And um, many systems that I've been to, you can just tell it was set up was just a problem, especially with that center channel. And that's why I wanted to make this video just to make you aware of how important that is. So again, the things to really uh, do, if I was just starting over right now, I would take, um, I would buy my center channel that I, that fit within my budget, you know, make those, the left speaker, the right speaker and the center channel, roughly the same price. Um, try to keep them in the same series. You know, if you like Clips Reference Premier speakers, try to keep the Clips Reference, um, the, the Reference Premier uh, center channel left and right all the same and within the same series because they generally use the same tweeters, sometimes different sizes though, so pay attention to that as well. It's not as important, but ideally um, your receiver would just be like, oh, these are the same three speakers. Uh, I'm just going to send the signal to them kind of the same. And that's the that's where kind of three bookshelf speakers might be a good um, compromise to people out there that maybe don't have the room or really big budgets. Just having maybe um, like SVS Ultra um, bookshelf speakers as your LCR, that would be a, a good example as well as, of that. So, you know, definitely pick your budget, uh, buy the center channel, then buy the TV stand. Those are going to be the, the really important factors. And just keep in mind, you know, the, a lot of... Uh, these aren't home theaters, you know, unless you have, again, a lot of money out there and you can just throw a ton of money at the acoustic treatments. Um, you can have it blocked off. It's a dedicated space. It's very dark. You know, those are eventually I want one of those, but that's probably a ways down the road. But these are most of the time living rooms, bedrooms, um, dens, you got kids, you know, there's going to be some compromise. But really the center channel is not the speaker to compromise. So that's kind of my wrap up there. Um, just, I would reverse things. I would put the center channel as the most important speaker um, it, along with your left and right, but build your si system around that. Uh, that'll give you the best results and um, you can even stick within a reasonable budget at doing it that way as well too. So. Again, this is the type of videos that I've been producing. The growth of the channel has been fantastic. I've been having a wonderful time doing this. Again, my favorites out there, Youth Man, Cheap Audio Man. Um, subscribe to their channels. Tell them I sent you. Uh, just trying to spread the word. Uh, those people just give you honest opinions on stuff, and I really, I really like following along. There's a bunch of others out there as well, too, but those are kind of the ones that I've really, really been enjoying here lately. So, again, my name is Dustin, and the name of my little channel is Average Guy Hi-Fi.